good to have you here this morning. So good to be here on Resurrection Sunday. This morning I'm going to read 1 Peter 1 3. Praise God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ. God is good. And by raising Jesus from death, He has given us new life and a hope that lives on. Praise Jesus. We praise You this morning. On this day, we remember that You rose and You did it for us. We thank You for the hope Thank you for the new life because you died for us. Amen. Let's sing. Oh.
is risen. Welcome, welcome to Curate on this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. It is wonderful to worship you this with you this morning. Not to worship you, no. We're definitely <laughs> not doing that. If you're new here, we don't worship each other. Um, we're worshiping the Lord. And on that note, I just want to um, extend a big welcome to any one of you that um, have come along visiting today. You've come along for the Easter service, or perhaps one of your family members or friends have brought you along. A massive welcome welcome to you. My name is Katie. This is Joel and um, this is our family and um, you're so, so, so welcome here. Yeah, we can welcome all those people. That's great. As Katie said, He is risen. Let's try it one more time. He is risen. And it's a good day to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. But uh, it's also a sad day for many people in this room today because we've had uh, two people pass away in the church this week alone. One of those uh, we had time to prepare for and uh, we had time to pay our final visits and our final respects. And you want to tell us about that one? Yeah, so our beloved uh, Karina Vincent, um, she passed away this week to be with her Lord. And um, so we really grieve with the family. But uh, gosh, she's had a long time to share her words and her wisdom and to share um, her faith, actually, with her family and with her friends. And um, Joel and I got to go around and visit with them a couple of weeks ago um, before, um, before she could no longer... Um, communicate um, even in writing and nodding and um, gosh what really stuck with me was just her pure love for the Lord her worship um, I put on a, a song of worship and the way she just danced in the Lord's presence was just incredible so we celebrate with her that she is with her Lord that she is free um, she is joyful um, and we and we grieve with the family yeah. mm. the other uh, passed away in the wee hours of this morning. It was sudden. It was a long time member of the church, almost 20 years, a friend of many, a significant pillar in the local community, particularly in Tapuki. And uh, that was Richard Crawford, who passed away uh, early this morning after his heart failed him. And uh, I know that that'll be a shock to many. It was a bizarre preparation for us as a team and all of the people serving today as we come to celebrate the resurrection but with heavy mournful hearts and so I bet there's a bit of all of that going on in the room this morning but I, I think we should pray we should pray that the Lord would comfort all those who mourn as we uh, as we're here this morning let us pray Oh, Heavenly Father, we love you. We're thankful for you. We recognize we, we stand in a weird place this morning, overwhelmed by your power and your goodness and the resurrected Christ, but also sad. We're thankful that, Lord, that you can meet us in the middle of all of that. And so, Lord, we ask for all of those who mourn this morning, for the Crawford family, for all of those, the many, many, many people. Richard lived a big life impacting many people. For all of those in mourning, Lord, would you comfort them? Would you be near them? Would you be near the family, particularly, Lord, in this time? Would you grace them? Would you give them strength today, Lord? And Lord, while we are sad, we do recognize that Richard is not. That Karina is not. That they are in their new bodies. They are in paradise with you. And we shall meet them again. Thank you for their examples of faithfulness to us and service to your kingdom. 
may we all catch more of that spirit. Today, as we celebrate you, Jesus, we just trust that you can meet us in the midst of all of the mixed feelings. And we can put our eyes on you, our true and living hope. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. So we have a good one, but we have a bizarre one today. So uh, why don't you take your seats? We're going to come into a time of communion. And Nick, I realize it's a hospital pass, but I know you're a very capable hand. So Nick, would you come and lead us around the communion table? Good morning, everyone. It's a bittersweet morning, as we've just heard. And um, what a privilege to share around communion on Resurrection Sunday. You know, I was thinking on Friday just about what that day meant when Jesus got up on that cross and he hung there bleeding, drinking the cup that was meant for humanity who had fallen so far from the standard of his glory and he willingly took it. And when he bled on that cross on Friday, he was paying the full price for the fullness of human sin. I know I'm preaching to the choir. We all know that. But the gravity and glory of that moment, my goodness, I mean, I just, I love this weekend. It, it, it just, I've been in awe the whole weekend thinking about the all-sufficiency of Jesus' sacrifice to forgive us and welcome us back in to the Father's presence. Like that song said this morning, the veil tore before Him and we have access again to the Father's presence. And on Saturday, how sometimes, you know, you put yourself in the disciples' shoes for a moment. On Saturday, the disciples would have been thinking, it's over. We've, we've given ourselves to a lie. I mean, the Messiah was dead. He was in the grave. He was gone. And they didn't know what was happening. Sometimes on, in our journey of faith, we can be in our Saturdays where things don't make sense. The promise might seem like it has fallen over. Everything's quiet and we don't know what's going on. But the amazing thing is we know in hindsight that this day, 2,000 years ago, a man got up from the grave because his father raised him and declared him the all-sufficient sacrifice for our sin. And not only that, when he got up, I was reading this morning in 1 Corinthians 15 and John 5, one day, you and I are gonna get up forever in glorified bodies, resurrected in glory and power with God forever. Come on, you can give me a Pentecostal witness this morning. And so if you're in the in-between this morning as we come around the table in just a few moments, just think about that. Just begin to give thanks to the Father that one day, because Jesus' resurrection happened in history, in real time and space, your resurrection is guaranteed. My resurrection is guaranteed. These dear uh, people who have left us over this last week, one day, as Joel said, they will get up. We will get up forever. Is that not good news? Come on, that's some good news. Come on. So I'm gonna pray, and then as soon as I finish, just come up and let's celebrate the certainty of Jesus' victory in every circumstance in our life and the certainty of our rising one day with Him. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank You this morning that we are not without hope. Father, that You have sealed forever, You have declared forever that Your Son, Jesus, is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that because we are His, one day we will rise with Him forever. 
Yet every single person in this room who calls upon your name, Lord, we are guaranteed. It is certain, it is sure, it is irrevocable. Lord, that you will raise us with your son one day forever. So Father, I pray as we come around the table to remember your son this morning. Lord, you would let the resurrection power of God fill this room as you raised your son. Come and raise us up in our hearts this morning and give us that firm conviction that one day we will rise with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on up, guys.
be seated if you're not already. Good morning again, Morena. We are going to connect this next part of our gathering to our family in Auckland, our Curie Auckland family. So why don't we even just put our hands together for them in Auckland. Good morning. It's good to be together. We could try this in a coordinated fashion. Hopefully you've been prepped in Auckland, but we could try it once more. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I don't know how that went, but I'm hoping it went okay. Uh, welcome to Resurrection Sunday, especially to all of the guests in Auckland. Uh, it's great to have you with us. I, uh, I want to speak for just a, a, a short while today. Um, that's my promise. Um, around the resurrection, and for those of you that are a part of our church uh, or, or regularly come to the church, you would know that I uh, enjoy teaching the Scriptures. I like teaching. Uh, I like uh, understanding things, but uh, the Lord, I, I felt like, had led me today to the not the, so much the point to explain the resurrection, but to hopefully talk for a little while and build our faith that the resurrection power of God might enter into our reality today. So that's where we're going. Uh, we're going to a place where I believe that the, the, the resurrection power of God is going to be real and manifest here in the mount up there in Auckland and is going to enter your personal situation where you need the resurrection power to enter today whether that be in sickness in your body and a breakthrough in circumstance, whether that be a turnaround in business, or whether that be energy to persevere through a season, whatever it is, I believe the resurrection power of God wants to come to you today. We, we don't just want to celebrate something that happened. We want to experience its reality in our present. And so that's where we are heading uh, for for our Auckland family here, we've been um, talking about how today we're actually in a, in the sort of, in a weird place because we've actually lost two dear people in our church this week. One of them we were waiting to happen and one of them unexpectedly and so we're in this sort of place of mourning and hopeful celebration. And so we're living in that tension. So if, if anything's coming across weird across the screen, um, that, that's why. But, but I, I don't think that that tension is, um, I think that's the tension that the early disciples experienced. They're in the middle of mourning their Lord and Savior, and then all of a sudden, he's risen. They just were beginning the grieving process. They hadn't even got through the seven stages of grief. And there he was, risen. How disorientating. Katie and I had the privilege 
uh, a few years ago now of actually going to Israel and going to the place where they believe the, the tomb to have been and going into the tomb that they believed to have been the tomb. And I was actually there, um, I was there in mourning. I'd recently just lost my, my dad in a tragic, in a, a sort of sudden tragedy. And, and so here I was trying to experience all the goodness of the pilgrimage and, 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 and see things and learn things while at the same time my heart was a mess. And I, I remember one of the, I remember that day that we visited the garden tomb. And I remember God meeting with me there. And I, I pray that he meets with us today. You know, we celebrated Good Friday as a church. And Good Friday is a celebration, a remembrance, a worship for, it speaks of God's love, Good Friday. Jesus hanging on the cross, it speaks of God's love. It speaks of his sacrifice. It speaks of the price of our sin. It speaks of the necessity for our salvation. You look at Jesus hanging on the cross, you ponder that and you, you see his unfathomable, unfathomable love, his mercy, his grace. But in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, we don't so much see those things, although they are present, we see God's unending power. That's really what the resurrection, if, if the cross screams God's love, the resurrection screams God's power to us. And power is, is important. Power is really important. In fact, um, whatever you deem as powerful, you're likely to put your hope or your trust in, in life. Whoever you deem as powerful, you're likely to put your hope or your trust in, in life. And that's why growing up and becoming an adult can be quite disorientating at times because when you're a little kid, you, you maybe saw your parents or your caregivers or your grandparents or whatever it is, they, they seem like they had it together. They seemed like they had a bit of power. They had a bit of agency in the world. They knew a few things. And, and then as you get older, not in any dishonoring sort of sense, but you just realize they're human. And as you realize that they're human, you sort of, your sense of their power begins to diminish a little bit, and therefore your sense of your trust or your hope being in them, and whether that happens at 10 or at 20 or whatever age it happens, it can be quite a disorientating experience where you realize some of the things you're used to hanging your hat on in life are not very good places to hang your hat. Sometimes it's not people like parents, sometimes it's it's. Well, sometimes it could be teachers, sometimes it could be church leaders, it could be all sorts of people that we deem as having power, having wisdom, having it together, and so we get tempted to lean on them a little, to put our hope in them a little. But it's inevitable when you put those things in people that you will be disappointed, disorientated, and left needing to rebuild in some sense. Sometimes it's not people, though. Sometimes it's systems. Sometimes it's governments. Sometimes it's institutions. We deem them as having power, and so we put our hope, our trust in them. We put our vote towards them. We lean into them. We think this is maybe where our rescue would come from, and inevitably we find ourselves disappointed again. And if it's not people, it's not institutions, Maybe it's finance and it's assets and it's a sense of agency and control in our lives and these things have a sense of power and control about them and if we can just collect enough of it, we feel like we've got a reason to hope, something to hold our lives together, but inevitably they will shatter before us. They can't keep your body healthy. No amount of wealth can stop you from getting sick. And these things too leave us disorientated. At some point or another, wherever we deem as having power, we're tempted to put our hope in. 
And so Jesus comes into the world and he starts revealing, yes, God's love, but also God's power. His whole story begins, he's born to the Virgin Mary, power even over the ability to create life. Ah, oh, then he, he, he's healing all kinds of sicknesses, the scripture tells us, power even over sickness and decay in the body, over cancer, over leprosy, over viral, over, over bacterial, over everything, over deformity. He displays his power over it all. He displays his power over demonic possession, demonic activity, demonic forces of evil that come against us in our lives. Jesus shows he's powerful even over, over all of that. Just at the speaking of a word, he can push back evil. He's power over temptation. Man, he's even got power over food. I like that one. Even when there's not enough food, that's nothing to Jesus. He can just make it like that. Multiply it like that. He's got power over creation. He's got power over the storm. He's got power over the forces of creation, mother nature, if you would, and he can only speak to it and say, be still. The rain stops, the wind stops, the seas settle. This is his power over everything. He's got power over matter. He can cause the molecules of H2O to solidify under his and Peter's feet. Power, power, power. And he's even shown in a way power over death. He raised a little girl. He raised Lazarus who had been sitting in the tomb for a few days, stinking of decaying flesh. That would have been a sight. He's shown power over death in a way, but all of us know that the girl died later on, right? And Lazarus would have been buried somewhere. Power over death in a way. So here comes the final thing for God to display his power over, and that is sin, which holds the keys to death and death. The reality is, is although the death of Jesus is spectacular, anyone can die. But it takes the true power of him who holds power over everything to call someone out of the grave in such a way that they'll never enter it again. And this is the resurrection of Jesus. If the cross speaks of God's love, the resurrection screams of God's power. It doesn't whisper it. It ain't a rumor. It screams it. This is where all of the power over everything lays in the world. And if we're tempted to put our hope and trust at small glimmers and shadows and whispers and wisps of power, how much more so should the resurrection of Jesus cause us to throw all of our chips in on him who has the keys to sin and death, who has power over creation, over life, over sickness, over evil, over the lack of food, over whatever thing you can name, he has power over it all. Yeah. Every circumstance you're going through, he has power over it all. Every sickness in this room, he has power over it all. And he has screamed it once and for all in the resurrection of Christ that he has power over it all. You don't need to wonder, can he? Can he? It's not can he, he can. And I believe today he will. Ephesians chapter one in verse 15, I love this. This is Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. 
and he has three prayers for them, and I want you to hear the three prayers he has for them. In verse 15, he says, ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I've not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly. And here's his three prayers. First, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight. That's cool. So that you might grow in your knowledge of God. Second prayer, I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Spiritual wisdom, that, you might, that you'll be filled with light, that you might have hope. And here's his third prayer, and this is the prayer for today. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him at the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or just in case you're wondering anything else not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. One of Paul's prayers to the church in Ephesus is that you would know God's power. Not just know about it. That's not what he says here. He says that you would understand the incredible greatness of God's power that is for us who believe in him. It's actually like another way of saying it. I pray that you would know God's power that is active towards you. It's coming towards you. It's not just back then 2,000 years ago calling Jesus out of the grave. That same power is at work towards you. It's coming for you. It wants to enter your life and your circumstance and bring the reality of the resurrection into your present day. It's for you. It wasn't just for Jesus. It was for you. And he wants us to know it. Not in the sort of, oh, yeah, yeah, one plus one equals two, but I know it. Let me tell you a story. Let me tell you what God has done for me. This power is for us. Or in Romans 8, 11, it says, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. Not only is the power, is the resurrection scream power, and not only is that power wanting to come towards us today, it actually wants to reside and bubble forth from within us today. It's coming for us and it's coming from within us because of what Christ has done. And gosh, this power should give us hope. Hallelujah. This power should give us hope. Yes, eternal hope, for sure. Yes, our, all, of, all of our hope is not for this life. It is for the life to come. Let's not forget that. I know we're obsessed with this life. I know Western life for all of our first world problems is still not that bad. And so we're tempted to want all of our hope in Christ's power to be in this life because it's pretty good. It's going to be hard for heaven to match up to it sometimes. Right? That's, we don't think about it. Sometimes people don't want to go to the next life because their life's so good. And sometimes we talk about all of our hope in Christ like it all has to happen in the, in the now, in this body. But it is for the life to come. This is the hope that the Bible says will never disappoint. But it doesn't mean there aren't some great and precious promises on the way there. 
It doesn't mean that God doesn't want his power to be towards you in the here and now. It doesn't mean even though, yes, the kingdom is going to come and it's full expression at the return of Christ and the resurrection of all people, yes, that is when his kingdom is going to be glorious. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more suffering. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more mourning. We will see him truly as he is, and we will live with him forever. It is eternal life, and it will be glorious. It'll be so good. Oh, it's worth looking forward to. And even though there's that, God desires that glimmers of that kingdom might break into your now. God desires that the healing you'll one day experience in fullness, you might get a glimmer of it now. God desires that, don't misinterpret this word, the prosperity, the prosperousness, the flourishing that you'll one day experience that you experience it in the here and now. The peace, the joy, the here and now. The love, in the here and now, and gosh, we need hope. Man, when people lose hope, they lose everything. Hopelessness, like loneliness, is a plague of our time, leading to unprecedented suicide, leading to people abandoning the calls of God on their life, leading to relational break. You know, people divorce Yes, for lots of reasons, but ultimately when they lose hope that they can make it work. When you can't see things getting better, you stop walking towards the better. This is the power of hope. I have hope that God will do what he said he would do. Because if he can raise Jesus out of the grave, he can do anything. I have hope that God is alive and active in our present situations. He's not just waiting for it all to happen later. He's trying to work it out now. I have hope that he is at work even when I don't see him working. I have hope that in his power we will conquer sin and death. And I have hope that we will overcome every force that comes against us in our lives. And I have hope, as David said, that I will know and see the goodness of God while I'm still in the land of the living. Worship team, would you join me again? The resurrection screams God's power. If we put our hope in even little powers in our life, how much more so should we put all of our hope in all of the power? But that resurrection power isn't just a story to be told from yesteryear. It's a present reality that Paul prayed would come towards our life today. That would bubble forth from our life today. And so I wonder if we can we can stand in Auckland and stand here if you're able. Do you have a situation in your life right now where you need the resurrection power of God to come towards you, to bubble forth from within you so that you might have a story only God could do that. Do you have one of those? Do you have sickness in your body? Do you have a situation that only God could turn around? Do you have a need for provision? Do you have a business that you're about to lose? What do you have that you need the the present reality of the resurrection power of Jesus to enter. My desire is not to hype it up. I cannot create it. But if a whole bunch of people, I believe, come together in faith, 
I believe we'll see the resurrection power of God into people's realities this morning. Yeah? Auckland, yeah? Why don't we start with those who are sick among us and pray for God's healing power to enter their bodies. Are you sick here or in Auckland? Would you lift a hand to us that we might pray for you? Yes, yes. Let's lift it up nice and straight so we can see it. People around these people, would you just respectfully put a hand on them or, or towards them up on the mezzanine there in Auckland, wherever those people are? Come on, let's begin to pray for these people. Don't wait for me. It's the power of God at work. It's not my power. It's the power of God at work. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are powerful over all, Lord. And we just lift our faith, we lift our trust, we lift our hope to you, God, in these ailments, in these cancers, in these bad backs and sore bones, viruses, fatigue, infections, whatever it is that's going on, eyesight, hearing issues, whatever it is in Auckland and in here, Lord, we release and we loose the healing power of Jesus into every single one of these bodies and we say, be healed in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus. Be healed, be healed. Lord, we don't just want to talk about what you did 2,000 years ago, as great as it is and as talk worthy as it is, but we want the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior to enter into every sick body in this room, Lord, and in Auckland, Lord. Correct every ailment, heal every disease in Jesus' name. has a circumstance that you just need God to intervene in. Maybe it's a difficulty. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a need for provision, just a circumstance where you would say you would need breakthrough. You need a miracle in that area of your life. Who is that? Would you put up your hand if that's you? Yes, 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 in Auckland, put up your hand nice and straight. Come on, people, look around at these people who need a circumstance over there. Come on, let's let's gather around, move around if you need to to get around these people up there on the mezzanine, I see that. Let's begin to pray for breakthrough and a release of miracles in these situations. coming out of the blue. We see miracles in motion, Lord. We see breakthroughs in circumstance. We see advocates coming to help. We see allies rallying around. We see rescuers coming over the hills. We see you at work, Lord, and we release your miracles into every business into every situation, into every difficulty, into everything, Lord, where people need you to move today. We see you releasing your resurrection power towards them. Let's, let's begin to worship. In Auckland and here, let's continue to reach out and cry out to God for His resurrection power to enter into our now.
you, Jesus, that you have the authority and dominion over sickness and over darkness and over every circumstance in this room. I thank you, Lord, that your spirit and your power is at work. And I thank you, Lord, that it will continue to be at work as we walk out of here. I thank you, Lord, that we see your grace and we see your mercy every single morning. And I thank you, Lord, that that is an unending spring that we can drink from every single day. I thank you, Lord, that you are restoring strength to the weary and you are restoring faith to those that the faith has been burning out. I thank you, Father that your spirit is pouring out on this place and that you are reigniting in us and you are producing a renewal within us and that it will cause a great stir among our families in the city and this nation. I thank you, Jesus, and honour you. Mm, thank amen. You, amen, amen. If you're here today, you know, we've talked about life and we've talked about death today. If you're here today and you have not put all of your hope in Jesus Christ. I wanna lead you in a prayer in just a moment that can allow you to do that. There's nothing special about the prayer, but I believe God sees your heart today. And if you wanna know Him, you can know that He's been wanting to know you before you even heard about Him. That He died for all of your sins, that you are not good enough for God, but He's more than good enough for you. And if you wanna leave here today, sure of your salvation, sure of your eternal hope. Leave here knowing your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that power actually residing in you to empower you as you live this life. You can have it all. It is good news because it's so good and it's almost too good to be true. But why don't we close our eyes, bow our heads, believe in for people to find their Lord and Savior right now. If you are here today and you want to be saved by our Lord and Savior, you wanna choose Him today. You wanna to become His disciple. You wanna stop living life your own way and live a better way with His Spirit living in you. In just a moment, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand if you're making that decision today. Think about it. If your hope is not in Jesus, you want to put it in Him today. I'm going to ask you right now to lift your hand so I can see it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Are there others here today? Are there others here today that need to choose Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Thank you, Lord. All right, you can put your hand down. Let us pray. Would you repeat after me? Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father thank you for your Son, Jesus. I put all my trust in Him. I thank you for the forgiveness of sins and eternal hope. I choose today to follow you and to live for you. Amen. 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 Can we celebrate? Yeah, look, if you made that decision, we've got a Bible that we would love to give you. We would love to connect with you. And actually, we've got an amazing opportunity for you and for anyone here that's new to your faith. That is a really crucial, crucial time in your journey. Jesus shares about just how crucial that is through a parable. And He shares a parable about um, the good, uh, uh, the uh, gardener, solar of the seed, the farmer, right? And he, there we go. And he, and he throws out the seed and he talks about this particular seed that falls on this ground and it takes root, but because the shallow, um, the soil is shallow, it, it withers and dies. And I tell you, everybody here that has been walking with Jesus for a long time has had someone come alongside them and help them to grow in their faith and create that depth that can sustain a lifetime. And so we've got a course called Alpha that is just about to start. And if you've got questions, 
like, why am I here? What is my purpose? Is there a God out there? How can I know that He's real? Um, this is for you and this is for anyone who just wants to grow in their knowledge and understanding of the Lord and let that go deep so it can sustain you over your life. Um, we've actually got a little video that we're going to Yeah, why don't you share. take a seat and uh, we'll play that. So Alpha is starting in in four weeks or so, and uh, if you're if you're new to the faith or you know people who want to explore faith, then uh, why don't you sign up for Alpha? You can do it on the website. Head to the Let's Get Connected. You can fill out the card on your seat. If you're new here or you're coming back to the community, we'd love to connect with you. Let us know you're here. Come visit the Let's Get Connected area. Yeah, that's right. Uh, next week, we've got a church picnic. We'd love you guys to come along. The information's up there. It's going to be at Coolin Park. Um, hopefully, there's some nice weather. Um, but bring a picnic and bring some friends, and that'd be lovely. Yep. We're going to have prayer team available out the front. If you still want prayer, we'd love to invite you to come and receive prayer. Otherwise, I think there's hot cross buns outside. There's coffee outside. Enjoy hanging out and a bit of fellowship with each other. If you visited once again, thanks for visiting. Let's stand to our feet for the blessing. prayer of benediction. Yeah, Paul, welcome. We just posture ourselves. Receive a blessing just through this benediction. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, love, to serve the Lord. Thank you, everybody.